Okay, did everyone catch that? So D-Wave plus NASA plus Google are teamed up together and they have a quantum AI lab whose slogan on Google Plus is new updates from the quantum AI lab's corner of the multiverse. <laughs> you guys are so clever and funny. Um, so D-Wave is not the AI of the future. What they're trying to do is be the first of the quantum computers so that everyone will say D-Wave instead of quantum computer. It's kind of like how, you know, we say Band-Aid instead of bandage, and we say Xerox instead of photocopy. Anyway, D-Wave is not the quantum computing of the future. And even their CEO, even D-Wave CEO says, there are even other types of quantum computers that people are building. Microsoft has a really interesting project going on where they're trying to develop what's called a topological quantum computer. The problem is that type of uh, computing will require the, um, the discovery of a particle called a non-abelian anion, which, which physicists do believe exists, but they haven't actually um, been able to identify one. So if you caught that, he was saying that they need an antimatter particle that has not yet been discovered. That's pretty sure of themselves because Microsoft has already opened up this platform. They've already hired people. They've already got it in development stage. They're dang sure that this particle is going to exist. Um, I think they know the future. I think that there is an AI in the future that is smart. I mean, like brilliant. So let's talk about how a quantum computer works. It uses three basic principles of quantum mechanics. One, superposition. That's basically when something can be in two or more places at the same time, which can lead to quantum entanglement, where two things, no matter how far apart they are in time or space, they act the same way at the same time. They're connected. And finally, quantum tunneling, which is possible because things are connected by a quantum entanglement. They can move freely in between both universes, both superposition states. So quantum computing theoretically tries to use these quantum concepts to process information. So here's the AI lab guys to tell This you. is what they look like. There are two of them. These are from our lab in Burnaby in British Columbia. From the outside, they look like giant black monoliths, big metal boxes about 10 feet on a side, 12 feet tall. And they are powered, the, the, they have a fridge inside them, a refrigerator that cools these chips to almost absolute zero. Just a wisp, a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. Hundreds of times colder than interstellar space. Amongst the coldest and most isolated and extreme conditions that humans have ever been able to engineer. These fridges, interestingly enough, which are called pulse tube dilution refrigerators, have a thing called a pulse tube, which emits a sound roughly once per second, which sounds eerily like a heartbeat. So if you're sta you have the opportunity to stand next to one of these machines, it is an awe-inspiring thing, at least for me. It feels like an altar to an alien god. It, they really are impressive machines. At the heart of this big box is a tiny chip about the size of your thumbnail. And on this chip resides all of the wonder and magic that makes this thing go. In quantum mechanics, there's this concept that an, an, a, a thing can exist in two states which are mutually exclusive at the same time, quote unquote. So I'm using those words because the English language was developed before we had concepts to describe what these things actually are doing. Imagine that there really are parallel universes out there, and now imagine you have two that are exactly identical in every respect, all the way out to the horizon as far as we can see, down to the last little atomic detail of every single thing, with only one difference. And that's the value of a little thing called a qubit on this chip, which is a contraction of quantum bit. 
And that qubit is very much like a bit or a transistor in a conventional computer. It has two distinct physical states, which we call zero and one for bit. In a conventional computer, these are mutually exclusive. That device is either one or the other, and never anything else. In a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus, a point in space where they overlap. And when you increase the number of these devices, you, every time you add one of these qubits, you double the number of these parallel universes that you have access to. Until such time when you get to a chip like this, which has about 500 of these bits, you have something like 2 to the 500th power of these guys living in that chip. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Now this may sound very odd to you and bizarre, and in fact I am using language that a normal theoretical physicist probably wouldn't use, but this is, what I'm telling you is absolutely correct and in line with the way that these things actually work. The doubling uh, of the number of these qubits on the chip has happened once a year for the past nine years. So for the last nine years, every year the number of these qubit devices has doubled and it will continue to do so. Beam down a message to all of us Earthlings saying, we're coming July 13th, 2030, and boy, you better be ready because the mothership is landing right on the front lawn of the White House or wherever you wanted to land on that day. The amount of resources that would be marshaled to try to figure out what to do would, it would encompass the whole world. AI is just like that. So when this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's going to be exactly the thing that you're thinking about, about those super intelligent AIs. So the one thing I can tell you is they're not going to be like us. <laughs>